hello and welcome to Analog Comics and welcome to another episode of Almost Enough Comics which is my comic haul basically. But first uh, a little announcement. I had a stupid accident and I hurt my knee. It just bent the wrong way and now I've been walking with these crutches. That's one of the reasons I haven't been making videos for a while. It's a bit hard to move with this and um, now my knee is a bit better and I'm able to sit down and move a bit more, more freely so um, I'm able to handle this video session moving things around and so on. But okay let's put this away and let's dive into the comics. Oh by the way one cool detail can you see there's a reflector here to the front and to the back. How cool is that? Finland is quite dark most of the year, so we need reflectors when walking outside so that the cars can see you. And this is pretty cool. Okay, we have a lot to cover. I try to be quick about this. Well, I have to say I, I tried not to order anything for the summer as I, I was supposed to focus on real life outside my door. But, uh, well, it was an epic fail, that plan. But let's focus on the comics. First one we have here is White Out by Greg Rucka and Steve Lieber. The reason for this, why I got this is, well, Greg Rucka. I got his um, Lazarus and uh, The Old Guard and I've loved everything he's written so far. So I decided to go a bit deeper and see what else he has done and if he can keep up his quality. Well, it turns out that this White Out is his first comic, as, as far as I understand it. So this will be a very interesting read, because Greg Rucka is now quite a big name within comics, so it's always nice to see um, the beginnings of these big names, the masters. There's two stories here. One is White Out and the otherwise is White Out Melt. I know that the first one is some kind of murder story and it and all of this happens in Antarctica so it's very closed and hostile environment and that makes it really interesting knowing Greg Rucka's um, uh, skill as a writer very very interesting start the next book is something that should make me smarter as it's the history of science fiction a graphic novel adventure. Here are the makers, so I don't butcher their names. This is published by Humanoids. It's a hardcover and, and it, it's a well-made book. I did look inside quickly. There's a lots of info here, but um, just looking at the pages here, I'm not sure if I see adventure as they say here. I don't know if there's a story here or, or if this just lists stuff that has happened in science fiction. Anyway, it's a um, subject that I'm interested in, looking forward to read this and it, it feels like there's a lot of information here, like a lot of data. So, well, have to see how it goes. I like these this type of listings. Uh, in fact, I'd like to have more and more books like this, some kind of uh, companions, like histories of uh, famous series like Tintin or Asterix and such, but I haven't been able to found them in, in Finnish or English. So I'll start with this one. The next book is Total Mystery. The reason why I bought this was the cover. There's two ladies, looking badass assassins or ninjas uh, says dark rage and I knew that this is about revenge what more do you need uh, however when I looked inside now oh, by the way this is humanoids which for me immediately tells that this is kind of European stuff done, done by Smolder and Marcella but when I look inside the art is completely different than the cover now, I don't complain, this is, um, it's a bit strange looking uh, graphics, 
but I like them. There's no, it's okay always to find new new styles. But what I don't like is that the cover doesn't match the style inside. And in European comics culture, that is a very rare case. Usually what you see is what you get. But if the story is good and there's a lot of revenge, in, I'll forgive them. Next one is not so much a comic book, but rather a series. A six volume series called Lady S. These are albums, though they are a bit smaller than the European, regular European album size. Reason for getting this is the writer, Van Hamme. Sean Van Hamme is becoming a very big thing for me. I just read his Largo Wins, the complete series, and it was mind blowing. I will get back to that series in, in more detail in future. So I decided to go deeper and get well, basically everything he makes. I do already have some of his 13 series, which is very Jason Bourne uh, feeling. I have about eight or seven of them in Finnish, but it's such a long story arc. There are many, many albums still left. And the same thing goes for Thorgal. I have only a few albums for that series and, and they, they have at least 20 albums. So when I saw that he has made this Lady S and it's only six albums. I decided to start here as I as it's easy to get the whole the whole thing. I don't know if there are more of these in France or any other language, but this is published by Cinebook, which you should be aware of. Cinebook is publisher of European comics translated into English. And I'm a big, big, big advocate for European comics. Like, look inside. This is very, well, one hammer, he has so many different series he's writing, but usually always uses different artists, but they all have this, this type of style in common. There, there is, they're not the same, but you can clearly see this kind of realistic, um, well, down to earth, like in real places happening stories but the graphics are the same and and here you can also see one of one hummus thing he has a lot of text there's so much text here that usually this would be a put off right really turn off for me but what i learned with sean one hummus is that these are actually half of the meat on the bone he writes well this is the story like like this lady s this seems to be some kind of high-class spy diplomatic um, this kind of um, thing or you know chain bondage but female maybe don't know yet I haven't read this but there, there, there is that vibe and he makes these texts are to build the whole political background and scheming so they are integral part usually in his stories so if, he's, if it's his story and there's a lot of text, I don't mind. Haven't mind so far. And I don't know if these are all separate stories or if this is some kind of complete thing from part one to six and you get some kind of a bigger story arc. Next, I have my craziest idea yet. Silage, because with these albums, I had to get these acrylic paint some brushes and also an acrylic acrylic pen paint pen okay okay what's the deal Silage is one of my all-time favorite sci-fi comics in English it's called wake but NBM only released was it seven or eight albums uh, and then discontinued the series then they started translated into Finnish they went a little bit further but also stop the whole thing. In fact, if you want to get deeper into this series, I think my second uh, video ever in this channel was about this series. You should check it out, it's worth it. The problem is that in real life, where the life is good, in Germany and, and France and so on, this has gone over 20 volumes already, over 20 albums. So I decided not to be left out 
and I ordered these in German. Although the name of this album is Update, the actual it's in German, as you can see. Very German. And my idea was to translate this. And what I will do with this, I went to this kind of hobby store and asked how to do this. I want to have speech bubbles painted white so that I can translate the text and write myself the translated text on top of that. I wanted an easy solution and they told me that, well, this pencil might work, but it might leave stuff shining through. So this is my first idea. This would be the easy thing. And I like good results with very little effort. But if it doesn't work, I have I already took the heavy weapons. Actual acrylic paint with brushes. I, I don't know if anyone has done this. Let me know if you have a better idea for this. But yeah, that, that's what I'm going to do. My problem was when ordering is that they they had uh, sold out most of the series and I was afraid that they are going to discontinue the German Silas run or maybe it was just a shortage but I I didn't even wait I just ordered part 19 and 20 so I'm missing almost 10 volumes between here which is kind of annoying but it it is what it is and you know have to go with what you get I love this series look at the art it's just absolutely beautiful next we got big book it's a thick one hardcover the Neil Gaiman library volume 2 these comics are basically adaptations they are adaptations of Neil Gaiman's short stories and novels this one collects the facts in the case of the departure of Miss Finch likely stories Harlequin Valentine and Trollbridge I have not read these uh, short stories uh, as stories, so th this will be the first time I'm getting into these stories anyway. But I think the previous volume of this, this library volume, it worked very well. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that Neil Gaiman is also, well, he knows comics too. He is very much in that scene too so I guess uh, he knows how to do the to do the adaptation the right way so that they don't feel empty that they've actually become a good comics too that doesn't always happen so I'm a bit skeptical about adaptation though recently I have gotten very good um, examples of how to do it so I might need to kind of loosen up my attitude on that very interesting. Always great to get more Neil Gaiman stuff. And the book, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. Invincible, Compending One. It's a ridiculous size book. And also in soft cover. I really hope that the glue holds here. It, it look, it's so thick that it looks stupid. Anyway, it's um, Image Publishing, done by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker and Ryan Otley. And as I usually uh, remember to remind that I don't actually like superhero comics. But that doesn't mean that I hate them. I, I'm just not so into them. And uh, well, it's, it has saved me a lot of money too, I guess. But occasionally I dip my toes into this lake also. And I usually find myself buying something else than Marvel and DC. Maybe it's because usually then the art is different and that so somehow takes me away from that Marvel DC thing. Uh, I read a lot of uh, uh, Spider-Man, Superman, those comics younger and I kind of grew tired of the repetitiveness of them, but I know that's several decades ago, so there must have been updates many times after that. So I know I'm talking uh, at the point where I don't really know what I'm talking about. Anyway, 
this is my way of kind of testing the superhero stuff. It's interesting uh, style, it's kind of style, it's real but still not. And in a way it's also simple, but it also, it, it looks a comical, but there's also very violent stuff. I've been kind of fiddling through a little bit, I haven't read this yet. I don't want to not like things, because uh, I understand that it's always me missing out, so I'd rather get them. But so far, yeah, I'm a beginner and this is a compending one and I know that there are parts three, uh, two and three also available. I hope I like this so, uh, because there's so much to read. Let's see. The next one I'll just show it off quickly like this because my last video was about Lobster Johnson but this is part of this month's uh, acquisitions anyway. It's a Lobster Johnson Omnibus Volume 1. Finally out. I'm loving everything about Hellboy uh, and I think it's a series, complete series that I will get back to in more detail sometime later. But yeah, so no more about this. If you want to see what I had to say, just check my uh, previous video. Ooh, a classic, reimagined, Lucky Luke. Not sure what I think about it, but I was very interested. See, this is a new take. I lost interest in Lucky Luke after Morris and Gos Cosini didn't work on it anymore. It's been coming out by different artists. This is by Matthew Bonhorman, but the thing here is that, as you can see, it's a very updated look. It's like, um, I guess you could say a bit more adult take on the thing, though it's still very comic, comical looking. But I got interested because this type of reboots, I thought that maybe they will update the storytelling and, and take it to a different direction maybe. And I know that there there is already one of this style made before this. Uh, I haven't got that into my hands yet, but this is in Finnish. You can, I, I can show you the Finnish language here. It's a secret language that only 5 million people know how to speak. So not very useful. But I can already see that there are lots of uh, characters from old classic Lucky Luke comics like Phil Defer and Jos Yamon and these, so this is very interesting. I really hope I like this. It would be a nice way to reboot interest in the old, old favorite series. Then a bit more European comics, again in album format and this time two of them. Damocles. I don't know how to pronounce that in English, but in Finland we'd say Damocles. But I don't think I think this is a Greek name anyway. Damocles is an agency for bodyguards, and this is also published by Cinebook. Remember, that's the name you should remember. It's a good source for European comics. Good stuff there. Um, I have the parts one and two. And to be honest, I read them so long ago that I may need to read them before going into these. As I don't remember how strict the continuity was. Do I have to uh, remember what happened before or are these all separate stories? What I do know is that Cinebook only had these four albums in their collection, so this is all of it. Not sure because they translate the stuff, so there might be more of these in, in French or some other language. But this is all that there is. Four albums in English, and now I have the whole series. Yay! We're almost there, only three things to go. First, Cyberpunk 2077. I fell in love with this. I bought, by in accident, I bought one of these. I would not have bought it if I would remember that it's actually a video game. Again, I thought that it's a tie-in or adaptation. Well, it was more like a tie-in and well, it was really great. It's very Blade Runner-ish, 
very dark, uh, hopeless, dystopian world. Which means that it's a superb and great platform for stories. And this is exactly how they are doing these. There's two stories, Where's Johnny and Your Voice. The other one is hardcover. I couldn't find the soft cover. I'd rather have them in soft cover. I don't really feel that there's more value to have it this in hardcover, but it was not available. But anyway, you can see of the names, there are completely different production teams or, or um, artists. It means that whoever is running this show, they're collecting stories and, and storytellers and artists who are willing to do a story in this dystopian platform. I really like the idea. It, it's a very fertile design. And if you look at inside, if you check the art, like this one has quite little um, dialogue. Very stylish cityscapes. There's a train here, tall buildings, and it really gives this feeling of bussing, unforgiving uh, city. There are these complete openings where there is no dialogue at all, but it still tells a really interesting story. It says a lot with just these pictures. Only a few more speech bubbles on the next page. And if you compare this style, this pretty cool takes here. If you compare this style to the next one, there's nothing in common. And I think this is a great idea. If they keep the story quality good, just um, th these are not groundbreaking stuff, but they are very entertaining, dystopian little stories. And I think this is a cool idea because um, then reader like me, I get interested of the whole cyberpunk thing. And with that, I get to meet or get to know uh, new artists, new writers and new styles. What's not to like? I really hope that they continue to do this. This is something that I could see working also as some kind of collected edition later. Second to last, Bruno Brazil. This is great stuff. I really love to see this come back. However, I thought that this series was already kind of forgotten and done, originally done by Greg and William once in 70s. I really like this. I grew up with Bruno Brazil, very uh, James Bondish action. Now it came back with the new creators, new creator team, part one. It's a black program, but this is uh, actually in Finnish. Bruno Brazil is a big thing in Finland, so they keep translating these. Luckily, very nice art. It's kind of updated art, very violent. This is even more violent than the 70s version. I hope that they have also updated the storytelling. They have not updated the time where this happens, the time frame, which I think is the right thing to do. But I hope that the way that they tell the story is more, more what is now than what it was in the 70s. That would be cool. I'm liking a lot what I see here. The art is really good. And it's just part one, which means that there will be part two soon. That's a good thing for me as a long-term time fan. Last one. If you're still here, you made it. Lots of bracken rights for that. Thank you. Uh, Black Sad and Amarillo. It's a hardcover by Dark Horse, meaning that this is an English version. And I've been collecting Black Sad in Finnish. Oh, by the way, I need to show you the creators because this is such an awesome book. If you haven't uh, read any of these, I, I highly recommend. Uh, I have the four, four previous volumes in Finnish. They are also similar hardcovers. And Amarillo has been sold out in Finland for years and years and years. And I was looking for second hand, but never turned out. The problem being that, well, we are a small market. So it's not like there's lots of stuff going around. 
So now there, there's another black set that just came out. Uh, it's, it's going to be translated in Finnish too. And I decided I'm not going to wait anymore. So I just ordered the English version and I, I will get the, the latest uh, album in Finnish once I got, got to the town and check my local comic book store. But the art, I mean, this is amazing. It Even this kind of uh, scene here, this is not even part of the story. It's just these inner pages that take you kind of into the mood. It's mind-bogglingly good. It's just so well done, the graphics and everything. I think the artist went to some school that is part of the Disney uh, Disney artist school and he, he, he was honing his skills there and it really shows all, I mean all these faces although they are animals it just works this is something that should not work this well but he, he just makes it work. And the story is they are set in this old, is it 50s, 60s um, time frame in USA and very noir crime detective stuff. And there are so many panels in these books where you just stop and stare and think how come anyone was able to pull this off so many details everything is just right well I'm, I'm babbling here but it's Black Sada it's it's one of the my favorite um, graphical styles anyway hey that was all thank you for watching this I'm as I said I tried not to buy that many books this time well I failed but you know we all have it we all been there and I'll see you in the next one bye